Hey y'all, Todd from Low Rock Customs here again. We've been adding a shit ton of new parts to the website lately, and I want to show you some cool new stuff that we got here today. We're going to do a little work on this motorcycle over here. We're going to put a new front brake line on it. What we're now stocking is the Goodrich line of products for making brake lines. When you see how easy this is, you're going to wonder why you didn't do this sooner. If you're just looking to upgrade your brakes, these lines will give your brake a better feel. Or if you changed your handlebars and now you got these mini apes or taller apes and you need a longer brake line, this is the easiest and fastest and most economical way to put a new brake line on your motorcycle. So we're going to show you all the available parts we got going on here and follow along as we put a new brake line on this motorcycle over here. And the reason we're changing the brake line is because we have made the forks longer. A couple reasons. One, I mean, look at this stock brake line. We got a piece of hose going to a piece of metal, going to a piece of metal, going to a piece of hose, going to a piece of metal. Really, this is a cool bike over here. We want it to look as good as it runs. We'll talk about the parts. These are called banjo bolts. You have one on the master cylinder and one on the caliper. They come in different sizes. We just mentioned the banjo bolts. I'll show you that we have several different sizes here. Uh, it depends on what year and model we're working on as far as you can plainly see that this one's a larger diameter and you'll see when we take this off of here and this one's a smaller diameter. Well, for this particular bike, these are gonna be standard even though they call this a 10 millimeter banjo fitting it's not a 10 millimeter thread. But to make things more complicated for you out there, and I'm not trying to make this hard, harder than it needs to be, but you do need to have the right size banjo bolts for your application. These are gonna come in a 10 millimeter by 1.0 for the thread pitch. They're gonna come in a 10 millimeter by 1.25 for a thread pitch. They're also gonna come in a 7 16 24, and also a 3 8 24. For what we're doing today, this is a 2003 Sportster we're working on, they are going to be a 7 16 24 and a 3 8 24 for the banjo bolts. Now, we gotta have a way to hook the line together. Here, we'll show you a piece of line here. And this is a clear coat. It looks like stainless, but it has a plastic housing on it so it won't mess up the finish on your bike if it happens to drag across something and that's what that looks like. This is a short line. And then it has these threaded pieces thread into banjo fittings. And this needs to correspond to the size of the banjo bolt. So pretty simple stuff. It's not that difficult. Uh, we'll just take one out of the package here and we'll show you how this works. And incidentally, these are available. We'll, we'll take all three of these out here and we'll show you what the differences are between these three different configurations. And it's, it's helpful when you're trying to choose which ones you want to maybe look at your old line and see how it's configured. Or if you're doing a custom application, you're just gonna pick what you want. Now, these are all 3 8 for the banjo bolts. And I'll show you, we have, uh, here's a 3 8 24 banjo bolt right here. Each one of these banjo bolts will come with some sealing washers. So basically, when this is going to get attached to the caliper, on, a, on this application, we're gonna do a 90 degree because you can see that that's going to replicate the stock line. So then you're just gonna put a sealing washer on the banjo bolt and you're gonna put insert it into the banjo fitting and you're gonna thread that part into your caliper and then you're gonna be left with these threads that have a compression fitting there. And the cool thing about this is no other seals are gonna be needed. The inside of this matches that so that when this line is installed on here and tightened correctly, and you can see that that swivels too for when you're tightening it. So it's not like you gotta spin your caliper around like old caveman days or something. And so you're gonna tighten that down and then you're gonna connect the top to the bottom. Obviously, this is gonna to be too short. We'll show you the best way to figure out what lengths you're going to need for this, this type of work. And then it's also available in a 20 degree fitting. So we have a 90 and a 20 degree, and it's also available in a straight fitting. So whatever happens to work well for your 
particular application. And if you want your lines to remain black like the stock ones, these parts are also available in what this company is calling ebony. It's black. Look, this is the actual line that we're going to try on this bike over here and we're going to show you how we determined that this was going to be the correct length for what we're doing here today. And the banjo fittings are also available in black. And this one kind of has a satin finish on it. It's not gloss, kind of satin. This is the one I'll be putting here, like so. And here's the 20 degree. Hopefully I picked the right sizes. What do we got here? Uh, 90 degree 3 eighths, okay, that's good. And a, this should be a 7 16 in a 20 degree, and that's gonna go here. Now, it's not imperative that you use the banjo bolts, but it does make for a better looking finished product. So in other words, you can use these corroded old stock Harley if you want, but you'd be better off replacing them with these at doing everything at the same time. So let's go ahead and uh, Move on over to the motorcycle and get a brake line installed. Okay, we're gonna start the job by, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put our master cylinder on. Uh, a good thing to do anytime you've got one of these off your bike is to spray the heck out of it with some brake clean. We're, we, I've already done it, but I'm just gonna show you some uh, brake clean from the auto parts store. Spray that crap out of this thing, then get your compressed air and blow it and a big giant cloud of frickin' brake dust will go everywhere. It makes the pistons work better if they're clean. Put that on your disc, you're gonna line up. We got some fancy new bolts. Okay, get our bolts in there. And it's gonna be much easier to break this line free with it on the bike than if it was on the workbench. And then we're gonna uh, show you how to, how to figure out what length line you need because these lines, they come in a multitude of lengths. And one other thing I didn't mention, I didn't show you fitting, but we should have those soon. I don't think we have them in yet, is if you have a dual disc application, there'll be a T that you can mount here, and then you'll have one line coming down from the master cylinder and one line going to each caliper. Same, same as doing a single, just has one extra fitting that's a little bit different than what we're doing. You'll have two short lines, one longer line, instead of having one continuous line and it, it'll work the same. Uh, once again, these are, these are called AN3Ns, and that actually stands for Army-Navy, and uh, it's a very good system. And uh, be sure that you torque those to the spec in your book. We're just gonna snug them up for right now. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take the brake line off. Well, that was the whole purpose to put the caliper on, and there's a little rubber cap over the bleeder valve that we're going to be need to get to that soon after we get the other line on. So I'm just going to take my wrench here and loosen this up. I think I'm going to grab a rat, a couple of blue paper towels because brake fluid's probably going to leak out here. Hey, look at that. We got not much at all coming out of there, which is good. Okay, I think what we'll do next is, it would definitely be easier to break this free if it was on the handlebar, but since I wanna just mount this on the bar and keep moving forward, I'm gonna go ahead and break this one free on the workbench. And then uh, we'll put a plug in it for now. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take this fitting off here on the workbench. That wrench was taking a little bit too long there, gang. And I'm also guessing that this fluid in here is probably contaminated anyway. This bike hasn't been on the road in a long time. And so we're gonna have all new fresh fluid in there.
Oh yeah, look at how dirty that is. Yowza, yowza, yowza. Oh, that's disgusting. All right, so I think we evacuated most of it. We'll go ahead and put this on here so we don't get any brake fluid on the motorbike. Yep, look at that, contaminated. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, move over to the other side of the bike. We'll get this bolted to the handlebar and then we'll give a measure for what length brake line we're gonna use for the attaching the two together. At this point in time, we can go ahead and figure out what length brake line will work. And all we need to do is simply figure out the distance from here to there. Well, gee, we were thinking, wondering how we're we gonna do that. We're just gonna use a piece of wire. Doesn't really matter what kind of wire you use. I just happen to have some of this extra cloth covered wire that we sell on the website, hanging around the shop here. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go from Technically, we could put the fittings on too, but we're just gonna get a rough idea here and then we'll try it once we get it on there. So basically, you're gonna go from where it attaches and then you're gonna go underneath the triple tree where it attaches to the bottom of the tree. And I know this isn't the easiest thing to do with one, two hands, but it's okay. We're gonna want a little less slack in it. So, okay, there's probably gonna be about right there. So we'll go ahead and hold this end and then we'll come over here and we'll bring this over here and we'll bring it down to the master cylinder and sense the fitting. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and bend the line. I mean the wire, gonna bend it because this stuff stays bent pretty well. Okay, so that's probably approximately the length of brake line we're gonna need. So now what I'm gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stretch this out on the workbench and we'll go, just go ahead and take a Sharpie and we'll make a line, okay? That'll be one end of our brake line. And then we'll put where we made our mark and then we'll stretch this out so it's straight. And then we'll go ahead and make a mark on the other end. And then we'll grab a tape measure and we'll measure from line to line. And then we'll grab a brake line that's that length and we'll go ahead and put our fittings on and then we'll trial fit it and see how it works. All right, so we got our two marks. We're gonna give a quick measure. And it looks like we've got 35 and three quarters. So let's grab a 36 inch uh, piece of line and try that out. All right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get the banjo bolt and the banjo fitting, 20 degree, 7 16 installed on the master cylinder. So you're just gonna very simply put one of your ceiling washers on this is gonna get orientated like this because you're putting the bolt in this way. You want it to be facing that way. We're gonna simply take our plug off of here that we installed temporarily. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and snug that up. And I don't think I'm going to crank it down hard just yet. I'm just gonna snug it up till we get the line on. And then once we get the line situation, then I'll go and tighten each one. It almost looks like we need to angle it back just a little bit. But you know, we can figure that out once we get the line on. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and attach a 90 degree fitting to the caliper. And this one says it is a 90 degree, 3 8 inch. That's the size of the banjo bolt I'm using. And don't be confused because sometimes they'll coincide 3 8 with 10 millimeter. This one is, if we look at the packaging for this banjo bolt, you'll see that it is a 3 8 SAE thread. Uh, the packaging on this says it is a 3 8 24. So that means it's a 3 8 diameter 24 threads per inch, which will match the caliper. So let's go ahead and get this one installed on the caliper and then we'll check the line that we measured earlier. We, I have a line here and we're going to check this line and see if this length is gonna work out for us. Okay, I think we'll go ahead and uh, jack up the lift. That'll probably make it a little easier to get to the bottom one here without having to bend over, ha <laughs>
Okay, so once again, 90 degree. Got my crush washers on there that are gonna seal it. And I'm just gonna snug that just ever so slightly with a wrench because I might wanna move it after we get the line on there. And let's see here. Mm, not really quite sure how that's gonna end up. So we're just gonna snug it up. We can loosen it and move it again later. So now we're ready to try our line and see. And if you may remember from a little bit ago in the video here, I made a mark on the, on the table and I just discovered it needed a 36. Well, after further inspection of what we have in stock, we have a 34 or we have a 38. We don't have a 36. So I'm gonna try the 34 first and see how it ends up. And maybe we'll be okay with that one. So once again, this is not an exact science. It's getting you in the ballpark for what you're gonna need you got to take into account how much the fitting's sticking up off the part. If you look inside the hose, you can see that there's a, a bevel on the end of the piece that's underneath this, and basically that's a compression fitting, and so that matches this, so that when, this, when you tighten this down securely, it's going to form a leak-proof seal because we can't have brake fluid leaking. We wouldn't have any brakes if that happened. Now I've just lightly threaded it on there. It's gonna go up to here, where it's gonna be attached with a clamp right to here. So we'd want probably about like that. That's actually probably pretty good. So let's go see if we're okay with this or if we're gonna uh, use the longer one. I know in a perfect world we would have everything we need. And then it goes up to here. And oh boy, would you look at that. I think we might be okay with the 34. So let's just go ahead and attach it up here. And then we'll give it a look-see. Okay, this gets attached there and there. Oh, she's a little tight. I think if we bring it down to there, I think we'll be okay with that. I think that'll be just fine. We're I think just for the heck of it, just for demonstration purposes, we'll go ahead and put the other one on just to see what it looks like, to give you an idea. I think we could get away with either one of these. That one's actually giving it a little bit more room there. Where we could, uh, we got a nice little loop action going there. Decision time. Well, I know I said I was trying to make a decision here. I'm actually loosened this up and repositioned this fitting because that's a consideration. It's not really changing the length on it that much. It's just changing the way the angle of it just ever so slightly. I think. To make my final decision, I'm going to go ahead and grab the two clamps that were on the old brake line and add those to here and see what it looks like with it attached to make my final decision on the length. Like we'll face it that way. And there's also a little trick you can do if you have a smaller hose with a bigger clamp like this. And I can see now I'm going to need a 5 16 tool. I think I'm I think I'm okay with this length. It looks like it's flowing pretty well. It's got a little extra down here and uh, I think that'll be fine. So we were able to get away with using the 34 versus having a 36 so I just got to tighten this. And the other thing I just started to say was what you can do to take up that extra room is you can take a piece of hose and cut a piece about this long and slice down the middle and slip it over this and then put it in the clamp if you want the, the hose to be completely clamped there and not able to move in it. And you may notice I used a special line wrench got a six point with a slot on it and that's probably a good plan of action for these type of fittings so you don't use a regular wrench and slip off it and mark it all up and blah blah blah. 
All right, let's lower her back down, put some brake fluid in there, and then I'll show you this cool brake, brake bleeding tool that I use. Most all Harleys will have some notation on the master cylinder lid of what brake fluid to use. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because this system uses .5. Uh, you don't want to put .3. Uh, if you have an old car, that probably takes .3. .3 and .5 don't mix. And when you put them together, it looks real funky. And the next problem you're gonna have is the brakes aren't gonna work right because the fluids don't mix. So this one's clearly marked .5. You wanna use only .5 for this bike. 03 Sportster. We're gonna take the lid off. And then we're gonna show you my method of bleeding a brake, which probably won't be anything like what you'll be doing at home, but we're gonna show you anyway. I have a power bleeder that I got from the tool truck many years ago because I was doing so many brake jobs all the time, changing lines, changing bars, putting different lines on, changing master cylinders, doing chrome controls, that uh, it definitely has paid for itself. And oh my goodness freaking gracious, it's leaking everywhere. The other nice thing about dot five it's not gonna destroy your paint. Dot three, you spill some dot three on your front fender and come out the next morning, you're probably not gonna have any paint where the dot three hit the fender. So be very careful using dot three. Uh, the way this is angled, it's, um, I think it was almost could have possibly been overfilled because it started pouring out the hole the minute I took the lid off and the lines off no less. So not a big deal. Uh, there is a level on these and that looks like it might be just a little too much. So once again, the method I'm gonna use is a power bleeder, it's a little ball. I'm gonna put shop air to it. I'm gonna turn the trigger on. It's gonna pull the fluid from here down to the bleeder valve. So it's moving the fluid through the line down to the bottom. Uh, the other way that most garage guys bleed brakes is if you go to the local AutoZone or O'Reilly's, whatever you have by your house, you're going to find a cup. It's just a little cup about this big around and about this tall, and it's got a fitting on it with a hose, and and then it has a 90, and you can what you'll and then it has a hose that goes into the cup, and so what you'll do is you'll take the lid off, you'll fill some fluid into the bottom and then you'll put the lid on and then there's a hose that goes into the fluid because as you're bleeding, you don't want to introduce air to the system. And so you'll put that 90 from the cup on the bleeder valve and then you, with, a, with the use of a helper, you've got to have two people to do it that way. That's why I like my way of doing it. It's a lot simpler. I work by myself in my home garage and also when I was at the shop, I couldn't call my buddy over every time I needed to bleed a break. But at any rate, when you're doing it with the cup method, what, it's very important to know that you're going to put the fitting on the cup and you're going to have some fluid in there so you're not pulling air back into the system as you're bleeding it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pump it and then hold the lever in while your helper opens the bleeder. If you pump the lever while the bleeder's open, you're pulling air into the system and that's not right. Um, I don't have that system to show you. I guarantee if you look on the YouTube, you're probably going to see somebody using that system on an old car where they're bleeding a wheel cylinder. Uh, it's pretty common. And once again, so you're going to pump it, hold it, open it. Once you close it at the bottom, then you can let go of the handle. It takes a little bit of doing, and you're, do you're doing the same thing. You're pulling the fluid from the master cylinder down to the caliper, but basically what we're what we're accomplishing here is we're getting all of the air out of this is a brand new line so right now there's no fluid in it so what I'm going to do to start is I'm going to go ahead and hook up my tool turn on the air it will be pulling air the whole time I won't have to ever touch this lever to do this one other thing worth mentioning I'm basically going to pull all this old fluid out and then I'm going to fill it up with new fluid and then proceed to bleed it the rest of the way and one of the other things worth noting, I think I'll pull all the fluid out and then I'll show you inside here. There's a little tiny valve, a little hole in here, and it's a bypass for the piston that's in there. And if you let the level of the fluid fall all the way down to the bottom of this while you're bleeding, 
you just introduced more air to the system. And the goal here is to remove all of the air from the system. So here's the tool I was referring to. When you hit this trigger, it's pulling. It's, it's, it's actually creating a vacuum inside that ball. And the really cool thing about this tool is you can actually turn it on and remove this and it'll still be pulling. You can hear it because of that giant ball. But at any rate, I'm gonna leave this on. There's also a detent here. When you turn this and go like that, it stays running. Once again, really handy for one man operation. And once again, I'm not expecting y'all to go run out and buy this tool just to bleed your brakes. But for if, you, if you're working in a shop, there's also a tool called a vacula. I like this one best. It wasn't really a lot of money. I don't recall how much it cost. So what I've done is I have this piece of hose on here and that's going to get attached to the bleeder. Well, before I attach this to the bleeder, I went ahead and broke this free to make sure that I can turn it once I have the hose on it. So I'm going to go ahead and put my hose on. Sometimes this wants to fall off, so you got to kind of keep an eye on it. And then I'm going to put some air to it. And then I'm going to open this up. And look at that fluid being pulled. See it? And you don't need to open it a lot. And then if we look up here, you'll see that it'll start to empty that. See it going down right now. See it going down? So basically, I'm pulling that fluid through the new line to the caliper. See it's still pulling it? And pretty soon it'll be empty. And then we can show you, I want to evacuate all this old brake fluid out of here. So basically I'm starting with new fluid. And it won't matter that I'm uncovering the valve I talked about because I want you to see what it looks like. But there we go, it's almost done. I think that's pretty good there. We'll shut off the tool. See, you can hear it, it's still pulling. And I'm gonna go ahead and shut this for now, for right now. Shut the bleeder valve. See, look at that. It's still pulling air. It doesn't even have the shop air hooked to it. Great tool, love this tool. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, use this rag to get the last bit of it out of here. Yeah, that's kind of scruddy. All right, so now that we've evacuated all the old fluid, we've cleaned out the scrud in the bottom of the master cylinder, we're gonna go ahead and fill it up with some fresh, clean fluid. We got her filled up. We're gonna go ahead and turn on our tool. Hook her up. And open the bleeder. All right, let's go ahead and shut her down. Close our bleeder. Turn off our tool that keeps on sucking. Make sure our bleeder's tight. And we're gonna check and see where we're at now. Now you do have to pump it a couple times here. And there, I'm starting to see a little geyser inside there. And I'm starting to feel that we're getting some, oh, look at that. Tap this, see that flu fluid movement there? That's because it's opening that, that hole up. And I can feel that we've got some brakes now. I can feel it, and just for good measure, I'm gonna go ahead and fill it back up some more and pull a little more fluid through it. And that's it.
And then once we get it all bled up and pumped up, then the last thing we need to do is check all the new fittings we just installed to make sure that we don't have any leaks. And there she is, look at that. See how much travel we have on the lever now? I can plainly feel that that's working. One other thing, yeah, look at that, that's beautiful. One other thing worth mentioning, anytime you're working on brakes on any motorcycle, whether it be front or rear, always remember, especially on a rear, to make sure it's pumped up and will actuate the brake before you start riding down the road. Because if you get to that stop sign and you forgot to pump it up, you could just go right through the stop sign. So I can tell that that's nice brakes. Generally what I would do at the shop is if I had the wheel off the ground, I'd spin the wheel, hit the brake. Oh yeah, baby, that's stopping nice. Oh yeah. So now that we've got it all bled, see how quickly that worked? I'm gonna go ahead and and now you can really see the guys are coming up through the little hole when you hit the brake. And if it didn't have that bypass, it would never, it wouldn't work right. And incidentally, there's also a vent on the lid. Right there, you can see that little tiny slot. And there again, that's that same thing we've talked about before. Good old atmospheric pressure. So we're gonna go ahead and fill this up. And we're not gonna overfill it this time. That looks pretty good there because once the, the, if the master cylinder was level, that would probably be just fine. And then we're gonna put our lid on, which you can see it's got a fat part and a skinny part. The fat part spaces that way. Make sure your gasket is seated properly. And whenever you're tightening lids on master cylinders on these things, you don't need to crank it down until you squish the gasket all over the place. You're just gonna tighten it down until you just see the gasket pooching out just ever so slightly where the screw is. And there we have it. Nice, beautiful. Okay, and a good way to check for leaks is you can hold it and then it's applying pressure and you can kind of look here, anything leaking? Nope, anything leaking there? Nope, nothing leaking there. And we can go over to the master cylinder. Usually if it's leaking here, by now it'd be dripping onto the lift, but we'll take a look there. And you can run, your, if it was dry when you started, you run your finger over it and if it's still dry, Good job, we got her done. New brake line installed. Once again, this is probably the easiest way to put a new brake line on your bike. It's say you put ape hangers on. Now your master cylinder's way up here and your brake's way down there. Do your measurement with your piece of wire, figure out what you need, order up some parts, lowbrowcustoms.com, put her together, give her a bleed, go for a ride. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, break this free on the workbench here. And stupid brake line. God damn it, Mikey. You piece of shit, mother I hate brake fluid. Look at that shit. God bless America.